Hey, what's up guys? Ken here from the Retro Toys Capades channel in Malaysia. Thanks for joining me today as we take a look at the evil Dark Storm from the Visionaries. Dark Storm being the leader of the bad guys, the Darkling Lords. Now, the Visionaries had a short run in syndication on TV in the late 80s. I believe that it was 1988 when I remember watching the show on TV. And you know what? It was just really short-lived. It had a small run of toys action figures, vehicles, you know, there wasn't a lot in the catalog, but everything from that line is rare today. Now on the TV show, Dark Storm was voiced by the incredible one-of-a-kind Chris Latta, whom 80s fanboys will never forget for his roles as Starscream and Cobra Commander. The figure's face cup reminds me a lot of Alan Rickman as the Sheriff of Nottingham in Kevin Costner's Robin Hood movie from 1991. In fact, if Kenner had used this face cup instead for their Sheriff figure, it would have turned out so much better. The main draw with the visionaries were these really fancy looking lenticular holograms that would be on the action figure bodies, on their chest, and also on the staff weapons that they would carry. As kids, when we saw these holograms on toys, I mean, most of us, me especially, would be like, wow, you know? And there were a few toys back then that had these hologram features, I think like Supernaturals, but Supernaturals was not really that widely circulated. Now, when it comes to Dark Storm here, he has the holographic image of a slimy mollusk on his chest. Uh, the thing with these holograms is that if they're scratched, because they're technically exposed, right? So if they're scratched, you can't see the images that clearly, but if you look closely, yeah, you can pretty much see that of a mollusk there on his chest. Now, these were just about some of the best fantasy-based sword and sorcery genre action figures in the market at the time. Prior to that, we had stuff like Dungeons & Dragons, which was great, but it was, you know, commercially short-lived. Didn't really have that much of a circulation as well at retail, at least not here in Malaysia. But these figures, yeah, they were much wider exposed. And Hasbro pretty much used the same bodies as that of the G.I. Joe figures for these, so you can expect them to be fully poseable. Uh, starting with the head there, the head's pretty much on a ball joint. The head on mine is... Uh, uh, pretty loose though i don't know if it actually came like that <laughs> or you know it got that way over time but yeah it's fairly loose but it's on a ball joint it's got you know ball jointed shoulders a swivel here the upper arm you can bend at the elbows look at that you know bend just like that very smooth you know if you have gi joe figures in your collection you pretty much know what to expect no wrist articulation though uh, you know, similarly here, the joints are pretty tight, I have to say that, right? The joints are actually pretty tight. The head was pretty loose. But the joints here and the body are pretty tight. One thing I never really appreciated was the O-ring style uh, used in the waist, okay? Because, you know, this thing just rocks back and forth. But, uh, you know, you may need it for an action position, but they don't really hold up that well over time. And they're not really great for posing because they kind of like dance around, right? And similarly, at the bottom here, because of the O-ring design, you've got, you've got ball jointed styled, Full swivel rotation right there in the thighs. Check this out. Check out this range of movement. All right. Excellent. Uh, the knee joints, I have to say the knee joints are really, really rigid. Okay. Very sturdy. And, um, you know, I'm always in suspense when I'm handling this part of the figure because it kind of feels like the O-rings inside are going to snap. Okay. The O-rings are basically just rubber bands connecting the screws in the legs. But it's still fantastic that Hasbro used the classic G.I. Joe bodies for these figures because, you know, it just allows a ton of play opportunities. Okay, I do like the way that the light catches onto the holographic image that's on the chest. Sometimes it lights it up a different color like this time around. It's blue. It looks fantastic, right? Okay, now it's time to get into the accessories check, starting off with the combat helmet that it comes with. This thing looks fantastic. It's got a lot of great detail. It's got the detail, in fact, of the mollusk creature that is chosen, all right, for a symbol. You can see like the shape and contours of the mollusk worked into the entire helmet. This is great. Uh, one thing that's got me a bit curious though is that, uh, you know, the front visor here uh, is sealed up. Okay, so like how does he see out of this thing? All right, so you got this thing on him here. Uh, if it's great, he looks imposing, right, with this helmet on. But like I said, okay, how does he see out of this thing, all right? You know, it's one of those things they just take for granted. Yeah, but, uh, you know, he's got his ways. You know, maybe he just uses magic, you know. Okay, next up, we've got this menacing-looking twin-bladed axe. Right, this thing looks good. Uh, it's got a little bit of a gold finishing to it, as you can see. Uh, definitely gives it a bit of a shine, all right? Just a little bit. So, getting this thing onto his hands, uh, you know, he looks fantastic with it post like that and uh, you can actually fit it onto either hand because he's got two grip hands because he's got 
two things for him to hold on to. One is the weapon, the other thing is the staff, right? But yeah, with the weapon in hand, it looks great. Okay, the helmet, weapon in hand, he just looks fantastic. Plus, with that holographic image just shining away. Darkstorm staff accessory is the standout piece from this entire set. This thing is just ginormous. Now, on the back of it is just an empty spread of plastic, nothing to see here at all. But in the front, you get this gorgeous lenticular image. Scope this out. Now, a larger lenticular spread, of course, means more room for damage to take place. So you got to make sure that nothing at all interacts with this thing. Not fingernails, not like, you know, scratches from enemy weapons, you know, during play. Nothing of the sort, okay? Because scratches and stuff like that are just going to ruin the lenticular image. And there's a lot of these staff weapons that are basically damaged and you can't really see the effect on it anymore. This one's pretty okay somehow. You know, it's lasted the test of time. And uh, the image here is great. Okay, you get these creatures here. You can see this thing basically moving uh, from one creature to the next. Something that looks very creepy. Darkstorm's got the power of decay. That's right, the power to bring decay to all of his enemies. And this staff weapon makes that happen. Now, this weapon <laughs> accessory is just too huge for the figure, I believe. Uh, it's not exactly compatible uh, with the action figure to hold in his hands. Uh, it's just, look at the size comparison here, all right? You know, but then, you know, it is what it is. You know, they had to make it of this size, I suppose. The figure, well, you know, I mean, if he tries to hold on to it, you gotta really get that sweet spot. Otherwise, this thing is just gonna fall down, just like that, okay? But uh, with some creativity, you can sort of get him positioned with the staff accessory in hand yeah just a number of positions not too many okay you just got to get him balanced just right and he can hold on to the staff accessory but uh you know make sure you just don't uh, mess around with this thing too much okay once it's on display that's it get some figure stands all right try not to breathe on it okay any movement might send it toppling whoa not bad there you go <laughs> now the visionaries featured some of the most absolutely gorgeous cutback art ever to be featured on an action figure presentation either from the 80s or any time since then okay because it's just you know look at this stuff it's jaw dropping but uh you know i don't have any of the cutbacks myself you know i don't have any of the carded visionaries figures i wish i did you know, so i could actually bring out a few here for the video but as it is you know these things are extremely hard to find these days even loose you know so forget carded you know carded you know these things are like price to the moon but uh you know they had a short range of action figures like i mentioned at the start of the video and everything in the catalog is just really hard to get these days you know you might get bits and pieces of them here and there but usually they're missing a couple of things or they're ruined and like i said if you get the mint sealed in box or on card man you got to be ready to call the bank okay so that's the video guys let me know what you thought of it in the comment section below I do have quite a range of visionaries figures that I wanted to review here on the channel. Let me know if you want to see more. I'm still trying to get a few of them. Like I said, the vehicles and stuff like that, really hard to get shit. But I'm going to try to source out a few of them. You know, so if you want to see the reviews for those as well, you know, hit me up in the comment section. Let me know if you're a visionaries fan back in the day, if you've been collecting this stuff yourself, how's it been going? And thank you once again for joining me. I'll catch all of you again real soon with more content. Okay, perfect. Stay right there. Okay, stay right there. I'm going to start the video. Damn it. Okay, let's get you up again. Alright, come on. Alright. Okay, it's right there. That's the spot. Okay. Alright. Okay.